Hello interwebs and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing some practical security tips along the way. I'm your all-around security geek and host, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting January 12, 2015. Before I jump in, let me share a quick show update. If you've been following along on YouTube, you probably have noticed me posting a daily Security Byte video. This new video kind of changes the nature of our weekly summary on Friday. I have one of two options. I can either just do another daily Security Byte on Friday, or I can kind of change the format of this video. The way I plan on doing it to start is in my weekly summary video, I'll start by quickly summarizing each of the week's daily Security Bytes so far and give additional information as well as provide links to them, then I'll share the Friday Security Byte as well. If you like this new format, please let us know. If you'd rather just see all the daily Security Bytes pasted together, let me know that as well. Finally, I can also just change the Friday video to a daily Security Byte rather than a weekly summary. We're just experimenting with these changes, so please let us know if you like any of them. With that said, let's summarize this week's daily security bites. We started the week on Monday with a story about CENTCOM being hacked. If you didn't see that video, click here. Turns out it wasn't really that big a deal. It wasn't a huge hack, and I have an update for you. Apparently, authorities think that a well-known UK hacker or hacktivist might have been behind this particular attack. Next up, we covered Patch Day. Microsoft, Adobe, and Mozilla released important patches. If you didn't hear about them, be sure to check out our Daily Security Byte video. On Wednesday, I covered some new cybersecurity law proposals by Obama. And while I think it's fantastic that our government is talking about updating our cybersecurity laws, the security industry needs to take a close look at these proposals because they could have negative ramifications. Finally, on Thursday, I covered some cyber attacks and malware related to the Charlet Hebdo terrorist attacks. So be sure to check out that video as well. Next, let's move on to Friday's news. Today's story has to do with a vulnerability disclosure spat between Google and Microsoft. Early in the week, Google released a zero-day Windows flaw two days before Microsoft patched it. And they did this because of Project Zero. This is their project to find flaws in other people's software and to give those vendors a hard 90 days before they disclose those flaws publicly. Google says they're doing this to improve security. However, as a result, they released details about this vulnerability before Microsoft patched. More importantly, Over the past two days, Google has disclosed two new zero-day Windows flaws, one being a pretty serious local privilege escalation flaw that could allow maybe a guest user to gain admin uh, credentials on your Windows computer. Now, Google's doing this because they think 90 days is enough time for vendors to patch. However, I don't really think this is good as far as responsible disclosure. On one hand, software vendors need to take care of critical vulnerabilities quickly. However, there can be circumstances that make this type of update take time. So I think it's that kind of disingenuous of Google to stick to a 90-day hard deadline if a vendor is actually working to fix the vulnerability. In the end, this only hurts customers. It doesn't hurt Microsoft. Uh, They plan on fixing the vulnerability in February, but in the meantime, Windows customers out there are at risk of this flaw. So I don't really like this spat between Google and Microsoft. I think it's cool that Google's trying to improve software security, but I think they need to put some flexibility to their 90-day limit if the vendor is working to fix the flaw. That's it for this week's news. I hope you found the stories interesting and enjoyed the new format of our show. As always, there were a ton of stories uh, that I didn't cover. And you can always find those stories in the typical blog post I put up associated with this video. However, right now our blog, which is blog.watchguard.com, is down. We had some unexpected server issues and they're rebuilding it right now. It should be up shortly. In the meantime, you can follow us on YouTube. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at sec adept, or you can follow WatchGuard at WatchGuard Tech. As always, thank you very much for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you. Hey guys, did you miss any of the daily security bites from this week? If not, no worries. I have them all posted here on YouTube, so you should go check them out. Don't worry, I'll wait.
Have you looked at them yet? There might be something interesting. You should check them out. Well, anyways, thanks for following us.